Welcome to the final game of Group F in the Stoneburner Open. This is an exciting game because it's determining which two players are going to advance to the next round. The other option uh, for the players at this table are wild cards. And actually, let's look at the table before we get into the game. So I've highlighted the players who are in this game. And it turns out that those are also the exact only four players who have a chance at making the top two in the group. And this was true even before the penultimate game was played between the other four players. Um, and just as a simple demonstration, you can see that Jinxie uh, is not in this game. Uh, Jinxie has already played four games and has 14 points. And meanwhile, both I, Seven Spirits, and Harry Cheng have 13 points and are going to both get at least one point from this game. And the first tiebreaker after points, so we're both going to have at least 14 to Jinxie's 14, the first tiebreaker is number of games won, and we both have two to Jinxie's one. So there's absolutely no way that Jinxie or any of the other uh, players who have played all four of their games can be in the top two. But... Uh, all four of the players in this game could be in the top two. Um, it's easiest for Harry and myself. So in fact, um, if either of us win, then both of us are going to be in the top two. Uh, so that's an interesting dynamic, isn't it? Um, if LSR wins, LSR is going to make it into the top two. And then whichever one of Harry and myself plays higher in this game is going to be the other one in the top two. And then Limonades' case is somewhat similar to LSR's, but he's a little bit worse off. Um, Limonades needs to win this game, taking him to 15 points. And he needs uh, Harry or I to do badly enough in this game that he beats us on the tiebreakers, I believe. Um, I guess one of us coming in fourth would only have 14 to Limonades is 15. So then Limonades could get through. Um, or if neither of us gets last place, then it would come down to the average points per game, which Limonades is probably losing. But maybe if I came third um, and Limonades had like way more points than I did, Limonades could still be in the top two as well. Um, but the rough summary is uh, LSR and Lime need to win the game to make top two. Harry and I only need either one of us to win or to do better than the other one of us while one of the other two players wins. Um, so what does that do for my incentives? I It's certainly a viable strategy for me to let Harry win the game, but what I don't want to happen is to be letting Harry do well and then Harry ends up not winning and I end up doing worse than Harry. And then like LSR and Harry get, get through, for example. Um, so that's in my mind. Of course, the, the key to success is just doing well yourself. Uh, it's sort of a foolproof plan to just win the game. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, right, so let's get to the game. So I find myself in fourth seat, um, and the row is stacked. Uh, maybe you didn't see it before I scrolled away, but there was both Overthrow and Steersman, um, as well as a couple of good three-cost cards. Um, Guild Envoy and Covert Operation Operative, whatever that is. Those are both great cards, in my opinion. The Fremen one's fine, too. It's not unreasonable. It has faction access. Fine. Um, as player four, my concern is all those cheap cards are going to be gone by the time it gets to my turn. So I, I'd, I'd rather build my game plan around one of the eight cost cards. Um, and getting to eight is something that Gurney is good at. Also, Gurney good at getting um, second place in addition to getting first place. Um, so he just seems like a great pick. He's also just a very strong leader. Um, possibly the best leader. Great. Easy choice. Other players took Shaddam, Margo, and Fade. 
I don't fault any of those except maybe Shaddam. I, I, I would not have taken Shaddam there. I would have gone for in third position also for one of the leaders that maybe has a little bit of more advantage on drawing like Margot. So now the game has started. Um, I'm looking at my hand and I definitely want to go to Eric Keen here, right? Because I'm Gurney. Uh, I am last in turn order. I can put in some troops. Um, I can get a bonus persuasion uh, by being Gurney and I can draw a card and maybe get something good going here. Um, so I'm I'm delighted that the other players all play their diplomacy on their first turn, leaving Arakeen for me. However, Limonades does throw me for a loop here a little bit by putting in three troops. Now that's a pretty bold move to make uh, for a couple of reasons. One is like Fade and Gurney are in the game, so that's not guaranteed to win at all. Two, he trashed a dagger, so I know he has at most one dagger. Um, I mean, this is a good combat to win, but just like you don't really have a great shot at winning it. Um, so yeah, it sort of puzzles me why Lime wants to put in three troops here, because I feel like the most likely outcome is I come over the top and he ends up having wasted a troop or two for no benefit. Um, thinking about it on my turn though, there are a couple factors that make me only put in two troops. Uh, one is, I feel like my main path to losing here is getting into a costly fight with an irrational opponent. And that's exactly what I'm worried would happen here if I put in three or four troops. That Lime would push in even more, and then I'd have to push in even more too. And that would just suck. Um, I don't want Lime and Ace to be able to, to drag me down while LSR gets first and Harry gets second. Okay. Um, and then the other aspect is, you know, in this particular case, I'm kind of excited about the one spice reward because that could let me go to espionage. Uh, and then maybe round two, that'll help me buy steersman or overthrow. The intrigue is also nice. And meanwhile, the influence for first place, I feel like the primary benefit there is if it can help you get hooks early, but I'm not getting hooks early um, as evidenced by the fact that Fremen spots got taken before I even got to take my first turn. So I just feel like the symbol isn't even a match for me. This is just not the right combat to risk getting into a, um, a stupid fight over. I'll just go for second here, collect a nice intrigue and spice and be happy. Um, I got very lucky that in high places turned up in the row for me to buy. I had five. That's excellent. Um, <clears throat> yeah, really, really good news for me. It's both a strong card. It's going to help me buy Spice Mist Flows, which are a good part of a game plan to have when you don't necessarily need first place, just first or second is good enough. Um, and then in particular, because it gives an instant spy, it can accelerate me into getting Steersman or Overthrow, maybe even round two. So I'm excited about that. On to round two. And it turned out that Lime didn't even have his other dagger. So the choice to send in three troops was truly kind of weird. But it worked out for him, so good job there. Sometimes you just got to swing for the fences, and that, that was uh, his chance to do that early in this game. Because as you can see, now he's got hooks, start of round two. So got to wonder here, is this going to be a Limonade's upset victory? That would be pretty crazy, wouldn't it? The player with the lowest chances going into the game of qualifying, uh, being the one to win the game, and uh, with a couple other things happening, could be one of the two players who gets through. All right, so I've got a hand where I decide let's go for eight persuasion. I can start off by going to espionage, draw two, put down a spy wherever I need to go next, and uh, hopefully that's good enough. So let's see if it is. Uh, I currently see four, five persuasion in hand, plus the two daggers. 
So assuming that I play ring and send in enough troops for the plus one gurney persuasion, I still have five. I need three more. And I can get two draws from Arakeen maybe. I've got this intrigue that lets me draw a card. I have several decent options there. Of course, I could also go to Research Station if Arakeen is unavailable. Other players are doing somewhat normal things. So Fade went to Fremkit. Um, LSR here feels compelled to block Haga Basin to prevent Lime from getting too big an advantage from being able to send in worms right now. Um, that might be a good move. It's also, I don't know if that was what LSR wanted to do otherwise. If it wasn't, if LSR maybe had some option to get to eight persuasion, then I think that would have been worth going for. But um, yeah, certainly a solid block there. And good, good for everyone who's not Lime that Lime got blocked from. Haga Basin right there. So it comes to pass, uh, as I kind of hoped for, uh, that I get to go to Arakeen and draw two. I draw my plus three persuasion, which I believe was very likely. Um, possibly guaranteed. I don't remember the details. I'm not going to think about it too hard right now. Harry's just uh, fighting for second place there, looks like. LSR 2. Um, looks like I'm winning this combat, which is great. I mean, second place in this combat is good, but any of the combats that give an influence, really, like, first place is kind of wonderful if, if that's an influence point that you can make use of. So I'm, I'm delighted to be able to get first place, get the first Ornithopter. Uh, that's good news for me. Um, I have a choice between buying Overthrow and Steersman, and I buy Overthrow. Um, I feel like Overthrow is a more foolproof card. Uh, I'll be able to get some victory points from it no matter what. Steersman um, is a little bit more complex, a little bit easier to block. If people are constantly going to deliver supplies, I might not be able to use Steersman to get influence. I'm like, it's still a great card. It's still giving me action efficiency, uh, not action efficiency, number of actions, uh, and drawing extra cards too. Um, and it still does give an influence on purchase, of course. But I think in general, if it's that early in the game and in this sort of situation, I'd prefer Overthrow instead. Of course, both is even better than one, but right now I have one and Overflow is my pick because I just want to get a lot of points. I want to make sure I get as many faction points as possible and then get a lot of Spice Must Flow points and then I should be in good shape. I already have a potential end game match with the Desert Mouse Intrigue as well that I got from buying Overthrow. Um, so if I can also find a match for the Ornithopter, then I'm in even better shape. And we're on to the next round while I've been talking about this round and everyone's even playing cards. So let's see what's going on here. Um, I just got another water getting myself potential ability to get Deep Desert or just Research Station more times. Um, something to note when you've got Overthrow is with your diplomacy to maybe pr prioritize getting your second bump or your fourth bump in places. Just get to an even number be because uh, Overthrow is not able to get you to an even number of bumps. And even number of bumps is the most efficient for getting points. Um, so there is... Basically, no chance I was planning to go to one of the Fremen spaces here, but any of the other ones would have um, been a good target for diplomacy. And I believe I just felt like getting the water is good here because uh, it means I can get the deep desert spice. And uh, Or was this the game where I got the spice? I don't remember. We'll find out soon. 
Um, this combat would be wonderful to win or place in. Um, although I don't need the mouse icon, it's still a good thing. Um, having the match before end game lets you uh, trigger the game end, uh, reduce the number of tier three conflicts where people can get wild numbers of points and maybe overtake you on the scoreboard. Um, so even though I already have the, the match in reserve, it's still worth trying to get an actual uh, match that can contribute towards ending the game. Uh, but of course, uh, Harry put in more troops than I had. Um, so I don't think I'm going to win this conflict here. Um, I picked up a prepare the way. And part of the reason for that is my in high places card has the Bene Gesserit synergy and I'm anticipating um, playing it for its agent effect at least once, maybe a couple times. If I could get that Bene Gesserit synergy off, that's even better than I get to place extra spies. The extra spies can be used within high places or without in high places just to make sure I draw more cards to get spice miss flows, which I want to do. This round, um, Harry and Elisar both got to eight, I think. Um, Harry went first and got to buy the Steersman. Elisar got Long Live the Fighters as a consolation prize. So this round, the combat is not a match for me. It's not something I should really care about very much. Um, as far as what to do, I think I have a lot of options, but if, if I'm reading this right, my last card in the deck there is Overthrow, and so I want to draw that. So there's a question of, do I draw that by going to Espionage? Do I draw that by using my Intrigue that draws a card? Do I draw it by using my Intrigue that draws a card and also Trash by spending a Spice? Uh, I think those are the main options to consider. I guess it's also possible I could go to like Arakeen or Accept Contract. Um, leave in high places in my hand, but it's not like it looks like I'm going to be able to reveal it for bonus persuasion this turn. So it seems like playing in high places is probably the way to go. And then it's just a question of, do I want to espionage or do I want to use my intrigue? Um, and I ended up deciding to uh, go to dutiful service, grab a contract. Um, there's sort of, both contracts had some merit here. Um, because I know I'm going to have Overthrow, of course, so Highliner is an option. I could get the two water right away, but I do already have two water for Research Station. And um, what I ended up calculating here is that with this Research Station contract and with going to either Highliner or Deliver Supplies with Overthrow, um, that's going to get me to seven Solari, which is a nice number to be at because I've got a spy on Swordmaster. So anyone getting to eight uh, is going to enable me to get my Swordmaster there too. Um, so I thought the research station contract was particularly good because it put me over a relevant Solari threshold. That would be my first action next round is research station. And the second action next round would be uh, sword Swordmaster perhaps. Um, and then the other aspect is it gives me a spy, and I I feel like spies are really good for my position because of the in high places and because of the desire to buy lots of spice with those. So as mentioned, I decided to, to use the intrigue for the draw. I do that, and I also want to spend a spice to trash here because I feel like my deck is very good, so thinning it is probably worth the spice. Now, I decide to go to Highliner, and the main reason here is I don't want the other three players to all get like super cheap combat rewards. Even though I personally don't care about this combat very much, I just want to make sure that people aren't uh, getting a bunch of free stuff because I, as the first player, uh, peace out of the conflict and am visibly not competing. I think when that happens, when the first player doesn't put in anything, it's often good for the other three players to sort of be like, hey, you know, let's just all put in a troop or uh, not as an explicit conversation, but 
but it's just sort of an emergent effect that like, well, I'll put in one troop and it's definitely a good deal and it might be even better deal. And then we'll see how it shakes out with the daggers exactly. But, you know, one troop is basically good enough, right? Um, in this case, uh, yeah, that, that's what I was worried about happening. And so I put in three, not because I expect that to win it, but because I'd probably expect that to get second place. And that's good enough for me. It also gives me plus one persuasion with Gurney, uh, just in case there's anything valuable that comes up. But nothing really did. I bought a, a Weirding Woman and a Rebel Supplier, and you might wonder what the heck is up with that. So the Weirding Woman is a an additional Bene Gesserit card to go with my In High Places. I was thinking the synergy could be somewhat useful. Um, it is also has the benefit of having like slightly different access than Prepare the Way, so I'm not just only getting... Um, an oversupply of green and blue access, but also have some yellow mixed in in the cards that I want to play. Um, I think it could, could also be reasonable to just reveal for a sword there. It's not necessarily clear that I want to reveal for a persuasion instead of a sword. So I think it's an okay card. Now in a vacuum, I'd still take prepare the way over it, but in this case, it also gets to reveal an extra card in the Imperium row. And if I reveal something for five or less that I want to buy, then I'd be able to buy it. Um, nothing good came up. In fact, uh, a six cost card came up, so it wasn't even an option. So I, I just bought the Rebel Supplier. Uh, Rebel Supplier. Uh, so one thing I was thinking about was denying it to Margo. Um, Margo loves Rebel Supplier because it just is perfect synergy with her ring. She wants to put spies there anyway. Um, but it's not just good for Margo. It's a good card anyway. And here uh, it can allow me to compete better in the combats um, and putting spies on city spaces is a pretty good strategy if you're just trying to buy spice must flows in addition to the extent that i am using the spies for in high places it doesn't really matter to me where i put the spies so i might as well be putting them on cities anyway right so that's sort of my thinking there i think it's a strong card it's like not strike fleet but you know, it looks sort of like Strike Fleet if you squint, and we all know Stri Strike Fleet is amazing. So, uh, yep, Rebel Supplier, I think that was a good buy. Um, I think the main risk with Rebel Supplier there is what if I need to draw Persuasion to get my Spice House Flow and I end up not drawing it, draw Rebel Supplier instead, then yeah, I'd be sad. But I've got some good tricks up my sleeve with the in high places, so... I feel like it is worth that risk. So this 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 next round um, starts off with LSR going to research station. So I my plan of research station, swordmaster, or something else is dead in the water. I can't do that this round. Um, yeah, I'm kind of out of luck here if I want to get Swordmaster that way. It's not happening. I don't have enough spice anymore now that I've spent it at Highliner to go to uh, shipping to get the Solari that way. Um, I could I could go to the spice refinery, but I just don't feel like that's really a good deal. I don't think it's worth it. I want to be more action efficient than that. And you know what else? High Council is just as good as Swordmaster, right? Especially when I'm wanting to buy a bunch of Spice Must Flows. Let's just get that instead. So the combat this round <clears throat> is another Ornithopter combat, and that means that I really want to win it. Because uh, that'll be a match for my Ornithopter. Uh, if I let someone else win it, then that person will have an Ornithopter and they'll want to compete with me on the next Ornithopter combat. It's just bad all around, right? Um, so let's make sure that I can win this one. I'll put in as many troops as I can with my first action. Um, and hope that Harry doesn't want to go to Highliner. I don't think he does, but in case he does, I still have the ability to go to Research Station. I just put down my spy on the Research Station um, using distraction, the intrigue, while I deployed my troops. Um, 
So if he does want to try to compete, by golly, I'm going to fight him for it. I'm going to put in another four troops, it looks like. Um, two from Research Station itself, two from my garrison. Uh, also, Harry doesn't know I don't have the Rebel Supplier in hand. Um, so I'm hoping that that is enough to discourage him from competing uh, with me in the combat with Highliner. Well, he does have Steersmen. So then it's a question of where he's going to go and what he's going to do with his troops. Now, as far as other players, it doesn't look to me like either of my other opponents can compete in this conflict, really. Uh, so I feel like it's just a question of um, whether Harry decides to go for a big fight. But um, I've got Harry pegged as a... I don't know what the right word is exactly, a, a very thoughtful player who is thinking through the consequences and so isn't going to walk himself into a fight that he's not going to be able to win. And possibly he also understands that me winning the game does not mean that he loses. LSR has drawn a totally absurd number of cards here using Long Live the Fighters and uh, a spy recall at Fremkit. Um, I guess that's gonna be a spice must flow here because uh, the row is out of good eight cost cards, it turns out. So um, I think Lime is the one who has covert operation here and um, if he'd played that this round and made me discard a card, then I wouldn't be able to do this. But since he did, sure, it's fine. Um, I can get to nine persuasion, even spending uh, prepare the way just to go to high council uh, without drawing a replacement card. And that's going to work out fine. So good news for me. It also means that I don't need to recall the two spies for in high places here. I guess that was my most likely alternative if um, I was forced to discard a card. I think going high council here is good, even though I don't need it for a spice must flow this, this round, technically. Um, aside from the fact that I guess I would have had to do something else to draw a card or, or get more persuasion some other way. Um, it's just really nice to have it already taken care of for later because I'm only getting two actions around. So LSR reveals for what looks like potentially a scary number of swords, but luckily for me, Calculus of Power is not turned on in his, his, his deck. So it's actually only two swords. Um, and it looks like all three of the other players are tying uh, for second place, meaning they get the third place reward. So I'm very happy with my position now after getting that combat match. Um, I don't need to worry about anything. Um, going really badly so it's just a question of uh locking up the game uh maybe trying to make it not go too long <clears throat> so now we're in round six um i'm actually wondering if i can win in round six here uh because well i only need four points and if I won this combat, that would be a match. That would be a Fremen influence. It's only one away from two. I could buy a Spice Must Flow this turn, probably. Um, what's clearer to me is I'm going to go into the conflict this turn with Rebel Supplier. Uh, often, I would be saving up my resources and capabilities for the round seven conflict, or maybe the round eight conflict. Um, but in this case, I'm doing well enough that I don't need to gamble on being able to win one of those. So I'm not going to. So I was forced to discard a card here and I discarded a dagger. It's possible that I should have discarded Dune the Desert Planet instead because one thing the dagger could do here is let me go to Imperial Privilege, recall a spy, draw two. Um, maybe that would be really good. Um, Especially if I'm confident that I can win the conflict, I don't need that entry card anymore, right? So I could trade that away for another one. Um, or maybe 
I want to play it safe, and I just keep the intrigue card, but uh, I delay a turn, so it gives me more control over the conflict. But I don't do that. I, I discard the dagger, and that's fine. So looking at my options here, uh, one of my actions I am pretty sure is going to be research station and uh, draw three cards because of the spy and the two printed. Uh, and I'll do that with rebel supplier and put in six troops. So that's kind of um, guaranteed to be one of my actions. And it looks like probably no one can block me from doing that because no one else has two water. Now there are two players on the high council of them, only Harry actually has an entry card, so he could have the one that gives two water. But I'm just not too worried about him blocking that in this case. So I do my other action first, which in this case I decide to do overthrow, draw another card, and put my spy down next to research station. So that means even if Harry does block me at research station, I can still go there. Now, part of my play here is predicated on a false assumption. I just totally forget, actually, that um, Protect the Sieges, the, the combat here, only gives you one Fremen influence unless you have worms in the combat. So I kind of thought maybe I can get to 10 points and just end the game. Uh, here's how I'm counting. So right now I'm at 7. If I get a Spice Miss Flow, that's 8. And then winning the combat would give me two Fremen influence and a mouse match. Game over, right? Yeah, no, it only gives one from an influence. Um, but anyway, um, that's why I was sort of playing to like secure that my line will definitely work. Um, I think I might have played a little bit differently, setting up more for next round as opposed to just making sure that this round goes as well as possible. Uh, if I'd realized that subtle nuance of there only being one from an influence printed on the card. But not a big deal. Obviously, if I win this conflict, I'll be in great shape. I had two options for where to go to overthrow and still place the spy down. Um, the other one was dutiful service because that gets me two influence, puts me up to the alliance, and I get to place a spy from that in, in influence level. Um, but going to espionage draws one extra card. And I feel like just in case uh, I draw badly, I want to draw that extra card. I uh, sort of make sure, make make even more sure that I get this Spice Must Flow um, buying power. All right, so I go there, I uh, have a little bit of a conversation with the other players about, I don't know if it's going to re recall the right spy, but the spy that I want to leave is the one that's on Siege Taber. But the interface of this mod is actually really good, and it asks me which spy I want to recall. So good job to the mod makers there. I'm putting in six troops, and it looks like that's going to be enough, right? Because no one's really set up to do quite that much. Uh, well, you know, actually, Fade can put up a fight here. So fate has seven strength, two intrigues. Yeah, you know, I shouldn't I shouldn't count him out for for this here, even though I'm getting up to 14 combat strength. That might not be enough. So maybe it's actually fortunate for me that there aren't two from an influence printed on the card, because then other people would have fought me harder for it, perhaps. Although probably Harry wouldn't have, because um I do believe Harry understands the dynamics of the top two advancing. So LSR has this big complicated turn, uh, gets to Bene Gesserit influence and overtakes both me and Harry, who are both at three. Um, LSR was only at two. So uh, that's, that's too bad for my prospects of getting bad alliance point. Uh, but that's not that big a deal. Reveal for a spice must flow. Yep, that's all there is to that. Uh, 
Now again, remember the reason I'm going hard for this combat is in part that I think it will end the game. This is the point where I realize that it's not going to end the game, but oh well, too late for that. Um, but I will say that even though I don't need the match because I have that intrigue in hand, um, it does make it much more easy for me to end the game next turn, even if it doesn't end this turn. I mean, next round as, as opposed to this round. Uh, so I still think it's a great investment of some troops. Basically, I'm saying I think I'm far enough ahead at this point that I can afford to get the same half of a victory point twice just to increase the probability of the game ending next round. So decreasing the probability of other players getting large infusions of points from combat. So three of us were in VC and saying pass in chat. Limonades was not in VC, and so occasionally we had to um, do a little bit of communication there after LSR verbally said pass. I asked Lime if he was passing as well. So in some ways this is an ugly looking hand, but um, the two cards on the right are enough to buy Spice Miss Flow by themselves, so that's good. In high places is five, convincing argument is two, high, high council is two, that's that's nine. Uh, I can discard the Spice Miss Flow in case I get attacked, that's fine too. So that leaves my two plays as Signet Ring and Dune the Desert Planet, most, most likely. Um, what I'd like to do I'm already getting to 10 points. I guess I'd like to not lose the Spacing Alliance. And um, I sort of have one hanging point by the Fremen. So it would be nice if, if I could get that point somewhere. Um, I think my, my, my basic options are draw into Diplomacy or Overthrow, uh, or the thing that I did, which is collect three spice and hope that I can go to shipping. So Harry is the only one who has the ability to go to shipping other than myself. And because of this, at this moment in the game, LSR said to Harry, hey, how about you block shipping right now? Um, at which point I did feel compelled to pipe in and say, well, actually, if I end the game, then... Harry gets through, so I don't think his incentive is really to do that. Um, and in fact, Harry also piped in and was clearly on the same page and knew that fact as well. So he did not block shipping. He went to assembly hall. We did talk about this later in the game, and it's possible that because he wanted to go to shipping, maybe he should have gone to sh shipping anyway, and then I'd have one less point. Um, but for whatever combination of reasons, this is the path that he chose. Uh, making sure to get the intrigue with assembly hall, putting out his spy so he can go to shipping later. So I have an, e an, an easy path here. I'm just getting to 11 points and I have a couple of spice. Um, of course, I put in some troops with my first action, because why not? It's probably going to earn some second or third place rewards. One thing that I can be happy about is that it is Limonades who is the main contender for this combat. I guess the main risk for me, again, is... LSR getting first and Harry getting second. Um, and that's pretty much impossible if Lime wins the combat here. Uh, instead, uh, it looks like LSR and Harry are doing a little bit of fighting over the uh, Bene Gesserit Alliance. Um, you can see Harry did go to shipping. Um, 
Someone unfortunately had to recall his agent from assembly hall, so it's not providing the one persuasion anymore, though I'm not sure if that made any difference. Um, and of course, took the influence with the Bene Gesserit. So with spending another uh, five solari, I think it was, right? Or was that someone else? No, I, I think that was Harry, yeah. He, he, he got the uh, Intrigue card to buy two influence. So he's doing his best to um, fight back against LSR and get second place just because, you know, doing, doing better is what you're supposed to do in this game. Um, second is better than third. So Alistar Sar still might have some tricks up his sleeve. He did um, uh, go re recall an agent, so he still got another turn. I'm 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 already out because I don't have my swordmaster, um, but I can't be too worried because I only have one alliance victory point. So the game is definitely ending, um, and things would have to go really really weird for the game to end and me not to get through. So it ends up that Harry only got to seven persuasion, not eight. So I don't think recalling the agent off assembly hall mattered. Um, neither he nor LSR were able to buy a Spice Must Flow this turn. Um, Harry actually had an interesting turnaround here and was able to uh, win the combat, I think. Um, so that's an extra one point for him. It's not a match and he wasn't able to recall two spies. He lamented uh, not being able to get a second spy. Uh, and maybe if his first action had been shipping, he would have been able to get a, a second spy, which would have put him ahead of LSR. But in the end, LSR got second, Harry got third, and Lime got fourth. So, phew, glad to have the group stage over. Now, my tradition in uh, tournaments is to immediately lose the first single elimination game. So, uh, I'm going to assume that the next round is uh, you have to win the game, and probably I'm not going to win that. But um, yeah, I feel pretty good about one fourth place followed by three wins. That's uh, much better than it could have gone after that first game. Uh, and I'm excited for the next round. Uh, and it was a pleasure to play with all these opponents. So thanks for watching. We'll see how things go.